What do you think it takes to become a scientist? Is it a fancy lab coat? Maybe a chic pair of safety goggles? Or if not that, there's at least got to be some kind of test you got to take? Some sort of official certification, maybe? We are pleased to inform you that you have been officially accepted into the secret society of scientists. Congratulations. You're one of us now. I've done it. I'm officially a scientist! <laughs> Turns out that's, uh, yeah, that, that's not what happens. At all. In fact, anyone can be a scientist at any time. All you have to do is think like one. In this lesson, we're going to focus on this topic as we describe the steps of the scientific method and explain the types of questions that life science can answer. Let's get into it. Scientists are naturally curious people who observe the world around them, ask questions, and investigate problems. Of course, there's no one-size-fits-all way to accomplish all of these things, but scientists do have a guide to help them that you've probably heard of before. The scientific method. The scientific method starts with an observation, which is the process of taking in information using the five senses. Sight, hearing, touch, smell, and taste. You know, I made some important observations today. Imagine coming home to this scene, like I did. What would you observe here? Pause the video now to jot down your observations in your guided notes. So what did you come up with? You might have observed that uh, this carpet's got some stains on it. Or maybe that the stains are shaped like little paw prints. What if I also told you that I have a cat named Lucy who was home at the time of the incident? It might be tempting to say, aha, my observation is that Lucy totally ruined your carpet. But we didn't actually physically observe Lucy doing that, so it's not an observation. Instead, it's an inference. An inference is an educated guess on something that's happened based on evidence or reasoning. So another great inference here would be, hey, maybe Lucy's got some dirty paws right now, which could inform the direction of our investigation. Once we've made our observations and inferences, we're ready for the next step, asking a question. Scientific questions are specific, observable, and testable. Biologists ask questions related to living things, such as, how does the amount of sunlight affect the height of plants? Or how do bats navigate in the dark? However, science cannot answer questions that are purely based on opinion, like, who's better, cats or dogs? or which bird in the world has the most beautiful feathers. It also doesn't do a great job at answering questions that are based in morals or ethics, such as, is Lucy a bad kitty for allegedly ruining my carpet? Speaking of, let's go back to that ongoing investigation. In this scenario, based on our observations and inferences so far, what do you think are some good scientific questions we could ask? Pause the video here and try to write down at least three, but it's okay if you get stuck. What did you come up with? You might have thought to ask, what substance is staining the carpet? Or maybe, is this substance something that we can wash out easily with soap and water? Or maybe even, who caused those stains? I don't know about you, but I'm very personally interested in that last one. However, there are some issues with it from a scientific perspective. 
I don't have a pet cam set up that will show us exactly what happened. So this question is going to be very hard to test and get results for. Perhaps we could just ask a better question? Given everything that we've observed and inferred, what's a question we could ask here that is specific, observable, and testable that'll help us get to the bottom of this mystery stain? Well, if we suspect that it was Lucy's paws that caused the stain, and we suspect that her paws are dirty right now, why don't we ask, does Lucy have anything on her paws right now that match the stain on the carpet? That's simple, observable, and easily testable. So that brings us to our next step, making a hypothesis. A hypothesis is a proposed explanation for an observed phenomenon that is testable. These are typically written as if-then statements. For example, if I examine Lucy's paws, then I will find a substance matching the stains on the carpet. We are now ready for the fourth step, performing an investigation, where we gather evidence to test our hypothesis. If you've learned about the scientific method before, you might be thinking, don't you mean an experiment? However, an experiment is only one type of scientific investigation. We're going to go over all the different types of scientific investigations in our next video, but this investigation we're doing right now is very simple. We're just going to check those paws for stain-causing stuff, and then compare whatever we find to the stains on the carpet. All right? Moment of truth, and the paws are guilty. I mean, filthy. Guilt is subjective and outside the scope of scientific inquiry. I would never refer to my subject as guilty. That would, that would be very unscientific of me. Now it's time for the fifth step, analyzing our results. In some investigations, this step could involve organizing data and calculating correlations. But for this investigation, it's basically just me checking to see whether or not what I found on the paws matches the stain on the carpet. I'm pretty confident, so I think we're ready to move on to our final step, the conclusion. Our conclusion is where we share our final results. When writing a conclusion, we either accept or reject our hypothesis, using evidence from our investigation to justify our results. In this case, I could say, my hypothesis was correct because the substance on Lucy's paws matches the substance staining the carpet. Now, does our investigation 100% prove without a doubt that Lucy was responsible for the stains on my carpet? No. I mean, I'm very, very confident, but for all we know, she could have been framed by a larger carpet staining conspiracy. But hey, if there is ever credible evidence that uh, disproves my conclusion, then we just throw my conclusion out. Science is all about creating accurate explanations for things, and sometimes our explanations are... Sorry, one sec. What was that? Wait, you did... You... Seriously? Okay, okay, we'll talk about this in a minute. One minute. Okay, so I was just informed that my nephew was playing with stamps, stained my carpet, and then blamed my cat. There goes my conclusion. But hey, that shows you how important science is. We need to keep learning so that we can improve upon what we've already discovered. The more we learn, the more accurate our explanations can be. So, remember. Anyone can be a scientist, even you, just by thinking like one and following the steps of the scientific method, which are making an observation, asking a question, formulating a hypothesis, performing an investigation, analyzing results, and finally forming a conclusion. Who knows what else we'll discover as we keep exploring life's mysteries? After all, that's what makes life science so exciting. In our next lesson, we're going to take a dive into the different types of scientific investigations that biologists perform to answer important questions. So until then, I'm Justin, and remember, life is full of wonders. 
So keep on learning and don't ever stop wondering. Hey.